In the first video clip, I explained that um, we need in uh, studying data sets, we need to be able to um, condense the data into manageable form, and that's why we uh, study statistics to learn how to do this. And I just want to uh, to show you a typical data set where um, if we don't take steps to condense the data, then um, it's just going to be hopeless to try to understand what's going on. So for example, we have 40 people who take a test. And the scores for that test are given in this list here. 79, 62, 87, 84, 53, and so on. Now most people cannot make sense of a list of numbers which is more than about oh, maybe seven or eight pieces of data. This list is just too long for most people to understand without doing some sort of a summary. So what we will do for the, in this particular example, is we're going to divide the scores into five point groups. Okay, so uh, all the scores from 50 to 54 will be in one group, 55 to 59 in the next group, and so on. And after we do that, then the data set looks a lot more uh, manageable. Okay, we still have, we only have eight classes here of uh, scores, 50 to 54, 55 through 59, and so on. Okay, and then for each of these classes, we have a frequency or the number of scores that falls into each one of these classes. So 2 and 50 to 54, 3 and 55 to 59, and so on. Okay, and we know that the total number of scores is 40. And so we can calculate the relative frequency of each of the classes by dividing the frequency, in this case 2 for 50 to 54, by the total, which is 40. And so for that, we would get 0 0.05 or 5 percent. We do that for each of the classes and get this frequency distribution. Okay, so frequency distributions are one good way to summarize data. Another real good way to summarize data is using a graph. So, a type of graph that's often used to summarize data is known as a bar graph, and this will allow us to uh, visualize or take in the information in a frequency distribution at a glance. Basically a bar graph is a uh, representation of the frequency by using the length of a bar. Okay, so I'd like to remind you about the example I showed in the previous video clip with those uh, viewer ratings of the TV programs. Okay, so uh, we had 25 viewers, and they gave ratings E, A, V, P, and B. Let me just uh, put that up for you again so you can remind yourself about that. And that was the frequency distribution that we had for this example here. Now let's look at a 
bar graph of this data. There it is. Okay, so we see for each of the responses, E, A, V, B, and P, that we have a, a bar on the graph, and the height of the bar corresponds to the frequency of the response. Okay, so the rating of uh, four, for example, means that four viewers rated the program excellent, okay, and so the bar labeled E has a height of four. The response A, meaning above average, seven viewers ranked the program with an A, so the height of the bar is seven, and so on. And we can also do this with the relative frequencies. Remember, we get the relative frequency by dividing the frequency by the total, in this case 25, so we get 16%, 28%, and so on. So we can make a chart or a graph of the relative frequencies, and we get a very similar graph, it's just that the vertical scale, instead of labeled with frequency, is labeled with percent. 